Welcome to the Women Talk Podcast, where ordinary women share their extraordinary stories. We would love for you to share your story on our podcast. Go to www.womentalk.ca and apply to share your story. And now let's welcome your host, founder, and CEO of Women Talk, Bridget Lassard DL. Hello, wonderful listeners. Today is a fabulous show, and it is brought to you by Debbie Canton of World Financial Group. Ever wondered if there's a career out there where you can serve others and get paid what you're worth? Well, Debbie found it with World Financial Group, and now she is looking for a team. If that is something that interests you, contact Debbie at 780-504-0526. And now, on with the show. Meet Katherine Johnston. She loved baseball more than anything. Me too. I love hitting In 1950, all that Katherine Johnston wanted to do was play Little League, just like her brother. But there was a problem. Back then, girls did not play baseball. So Katherine cut off her braids and showed up as Tubby Johnston. And now, at the age of 81... Catherine Tubby Johnston shared her story with me. What an incredible, incredible pleasure to have a moment with this true pioneer that has paved the way for millions of little girls to play baseball. Let's hear Catherine's story. I just want to tell the story about my Little League baseball career just to be a motivational and inspiration to young children to dream big and go after the dreams. Now, uh, I, I was hooked on baseball since the age of six when I would listen to the Yankee game, the Yankees play with it too, with the broadcaster Mel Allen, because my dad loved the Yankees and he loved baseball. And he took me out with my brother and we would practice. Almost on a daily basis, when he'd get home from work, we'd go out to Sandlot. Sometimes we got some other children to play with us. And uh, uh, back in 1950, uh, Little League was in its formative years in Corning, New York. We had just moved back to Corning after three years in Bradford, Pennsylvania. So uh, it was easy to, to play and not have anyone recognize me because I was playing on the other side of town. And I have to tell you that uh, I don't know how you would feel, but I know I felt sad and upset because, I, you know, to, uh, to want to go out and play and be told that girls don't play baseball, even with young girls. So I just... Um, I was in the kitchen one time. My brother was leaving to go to practice, and uh, I started crying. And I said to my mom, why can't I play? You know, I'm just as good as Tom. In fact, I think I'm better than Tom. And um, uh, she, she had read the morning newspaper, and she said, well, you know, there's another team trying out, and uh, why don't you go try out? I said, how can I? I'm a girl. I don't know what you'd feel like if you were told that you couldn't play a sport because of your gender, but it really affected me. So I said to my mom, you know what, cut off my braids. I'm going to try out as a boy. And so she cut my braids. She was a little shocked at the time, but she cut my braids. And uh, then I ran to my brother's room and got a baseball cap and a pair of his slacks. But most of the time... Young girls back in 1950 wore dresses and sometimes shorts if you're playing hopscotch or hide and go seek. It was an innocent period of time. Even though I was 13, it was like a nine year old today. And um, so I ran to my sister's room and I said, I have a twin sister, Mary. And I said, Could I borrow your bicycle to go to practice? Because I didn't have one and my parents couldn't afford to get me one. So I ran off to practice with her bicycle, 
and I signed up. Oh, I asked my mom before I left, you know, whoever heard of a boy named Ta- named Catherine? She says, well, you're always reading Tubby and Little Lou comic books. Why don't you call yourself Tubby? I was small. I was very little, so it didn't make any difference if I called myself Tubby or what I called myself as long as I had a boy's name. So I signed up as Tubby Johnston. Where'd you get the name? Are you talking? Where you got the name? Yeah, from my favorite comic book. So anyway, uh, I, there was practice, so about three or four practices. We've, you know, at that time, uh, not everyone made a team. You, uh, I went in on, on equal footing as the boys, and after the third practice, I made the team. And um, then I decided I better tell the coach because even then, some of the kids were saying to me, is your name really Tubby? So I told the coach after he had selected me to play first base on the Kings Dairy team, I told the coach that I was really a girl. And he thought for a while, and he looked, he said, well, you know, you're a really good player, and we'd like to use you on the team. Plus, we don't have rules for girls. <laughs> so I... Uh, I got to play first base, and I got to play first base the entire season because there really wasn't a rule at the time that girls could not play, but I didn't know that. Um, as after I played, my dad went to a meeting uh, I was on the time in the fall with the uh, parents and little league coaches and everything, and he was he was told that they put a rule in, which is referred to as the tubby rule, uh, that girls are not eligible under any condition. So I got to um, I got to the opportunity to play, which made me the trailblazer. And eventually, this gave every little girl a voice in the little league baseball, and eventually softball. But you know, at the time, I didn't know that. But uh, anyway, it was just the catalyst for the tubby rule by breaking the social norms in 1950 and playing Little League Baseball. Do you want more out of Women Talk? Sign up for our Women Talk membership today. Receive discounts at all of our live events, talk on more stages, receive free monthly webinars, or host a webinar yourself. Join this powerful sisterhood we call Women Talk. Visit womentalk.ca slash membership to join at 70% off for a limited time only. What a magnificent pioneer you are. I just absolutely adored your story. Now tell us there's other things that have happened to you in the last few years as well. What else has happened for you? I was asked to throw out a ball for the little for the uh, New York Yankees. That was in 2006, and, and as you probably know, I am enshrined in the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. That was also in 2006. Wow, and that I, was a good year for you. It really was. How and was it to be? How was it to be on that field, that Yankee Stadium, with all these people watching, looking down as you were pitching the ball? Well, that was wonderful, and I was not nervous. However, <laughs> I held on to the ball a little too long, so I one-hopped it to the catcher, which is Jorge Crisada. <laughs> but he gave me a big hug and a kiss, so I guess it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, also in 2010, I gave a presentation to the Pony League World Series at the Ronald Reagan Museum. And then, um, as you know, the, 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 in, two, the, in 2017, uh, StoryCorps asked, well, actually, again, in 2010, I also threw out a pair, first pitch for the Oakland A's, and that was very exciting. And then in 2017, StoryCorps asked if we would give a presentation at the San Francisco uh, Library yeah, and now it's been sent to the uh, Library of Congress in D.C. The, uh, for future generations. And then just recently in March, a book came out, and it's called Anybody's Game. It can be ordered on uh, Amazon. And it's 
absolutely adorable, and it is such a motivational uh, read for young children, boys and girls, actually. I just think that if you're a, a youngster and you want to do something, you want to play ball, you have a passion for a certain sport, don't let the fact that, you know, the male gender is going to be the ones that are selected. Just dream big and go after that dream. I could never understand why if you have the same abilities as as, the, as uh, boys, why your gender would get in the way. But it did in 1950. And I think that continued for a while until uh, 1974 with a now organization got involved and had that rule taken out. And when I talked to the vice president of Little League, Lance Van Hawken, he said that that's when they decided to have Little League softball for girls, which I would imagine years later, people that played softball and were good at it got scholarships to school. So I'm taking credit for all of it. <laughs> you certainly should. You are an incredible pioneer. I ever since I've, ever since I've come across your story, I have been so enthralled by you. I think you are absolutely fabulous. Tell me, <laughs> tell me, how did your dad and your brother feel about you playing ball? Oh, my dad was so excited. He hugged me. He said, that's, you know, that's my boy, Kit Kat, because he called me Kit Kat or boneheaded, depending on what I was doing. <laughs> and because uh, I never gave up. I always kept going after what I wanted. And uh, but um, he was happy about it. My brother accepted it, too. In uh, see, this, this league that was formed was formed two weeks after Little League got started in Corning, New York. And um, so after my brother was playing for the Knights of Columbus, my dad talked him into trying out for my team so that when they came to the games, they could watch both of us play. So Tom did, and he played shortstop. And wow. He dad, first, and he base, dad, first base and yeah. shortstop in the same family. Yeah. Well, now, I did can't you, quite understand. Did you ever play as an adult? No. What I did is... Um, after I played Little League, uh, the next year I was recruited to play softball on a women's softball team in Alamar in New York, which is about 20 miles from Corning. The coach came after me every day for practice and took me to Alamar and brought me back or I'd spend the night at his place because he had a daughter who was on the team. So, But as an adult, I did not play baseball with this um you know, I didn't play baseball or softball, but I do enjoy going out and throwing baseballs for the major league teams. Now, on May 12th, I get the opportunity to go to the Rivercats game in Sacramento, and they're a triple-A team for the Giants. I was going to throw out a first pitch, but they also want me to walk across the field as they talk about me. And then uh, I was going to give some people some baseballs that were given to me by the president of the Northern California uh, Little League. He gave me four dozen Little League balls, and I'm just going to give them away to different people that, you know, like my story. Are you going to sign those balls? Of course. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Now tell me, in the Hall of Fame, what do they have of, in there of you? Is it I, didn't, I don't know if I understood that, but at the Hall of Fame, they have a plaque that uh, recognizes me as the first girl to play Little League Baseball. And also they have a picture of me in this case where they also have the pictures of some of the girls that were on the uh, professional baseball team and other girls that made history playing baseball. Now, like I said, I, I didn't go out to... Uh, to be a pioneer or a trailblazer. That wasn't my intention. I just wanted to play the game that I love and it ended up that way. But I guess I was at the right place at the right time with the right coach, I guess. That was Most definitely. I think it's wonderful that your coach saw that you were valuable enough and wanted to keep you. What did all your girlfriends say 
when you were playing ball in the fit in 1950? You know, I don't think, I don't think they cared. Uh, none of them ever came out to watch me play, even my twin sister. <laughs> but, you know, but I was available for them when we, we played a lot of tennis, we went swimming, we played games that girls played then. And as far as, uh, uh, having anything derogatory to say to me, they did not. However, I did get uh, teased by people at the games. You know, they booed me. They called me an it. They called me a freak. But I ignored it all because I didn't want to get kicked off the team. And uh, plus, um, uh, would some of the some of the boys on the other teams didn't like the fact that I was a girl playing, and they would push me down and and try to hurt me, but I, I, only one time did I get even, but I don't what, even just. Tell me about it. I want to know what happened. Well, this one boy was out at first base and he pushed and he, and when he came to first base, he pushed me down and, and uh, laughed at me because, but he, although he was out and he knew he was out, but just to push me down because I was a girl. And he admitted that several years later. However, the next time he got up to bat, he hit his ball out in center field. And as he was rounding first base, I tripped him. <laughs> and, uh, Love it. You know, but they gave him second base anyway. It was pretty obvious I stuck my foot out and tripped him. But I, that's not good sportsmanship, and I don't encourage anything like that. <laughs> that's so cute, though. <laughs> Sometimes you have to get even. Uh, <laughs> How do you feel about all the women speaking up now wanting equal pay and, and all the stuff going on in the world that women want more and want equality now? Well, I think it's amazing. I think it's wonderful. I think that the women ought to make, their, uh, make it known that they also have the good talent that men have. If, if In fact, I think they're better. I think they're more patient. And they're more, um, I think they have a more character and self-confidence. And I think that you just need to go after what it is you want, whether it's a head of an organization, whether it's uh, helping charity events, uh, or playing a game that you love. Of all the things that have happened to you, from 1950 regarding baseball, which one has been your favorite thing? I think being enshrined in the Hall of Fame uh, was a favorite, although it, it's pretty close to throwing a first pitch out at the New York Yankee Stadium, which I want to do again in the new stadium, but I don't know if I'll get there. Oh, just keep putting it out there. I think you should definitely get an opportunity. Who do you cheer for? Oh, the New York Yankees, of course. I love the Yankees. Um, I uh, I watch them every time I can. But my dream as a child was to be a first baseman for the New York Yankees, but I'm still waiting for them to call me up. I don't think they're going to anymore. <laughs> but <laughs> I love that. It's so fabulous. It's how, old, how old are you, Catherine? How old am I now? Yeah. Well, I'm 81. Good for you. And you have so much life in you. It's so fantastic. Um, do you have any grandkids? No, my, none of my ch I have three children. Only one of them played Little League. That was you know, my older son. Nobody uh, ever got married and nobody had any children. So um, I don't know. Uh, I think it's a little late now. I don't have grandkids, but I, I love going to the schools and talking to the little children. They, they come up and they hug me and they want, their parents want pictures of me with them. One little boy asked me if I played with Babe Ruth. I said, <laughs> I know I'm old, but I think he played before I was born. <laughs> <laughs> their children are so adorable. Oh, uh, they are. And they're so formative. I mean, you can really, um, uh, they really make an impression on them. And I, you know, I tell them, you know, you just go after whatever it is you want to go after. And just dream big and pursue those dreams. Now, when I had uh, Heather Lang as the author of the book, 
when she came, she flew off from Massachusetts and um, when we went to uh, six different schools and we went to the Quinas Club, the early Quinas Club uh, meeting for children. I mean, that's what they do. They represent children. Of course, they were all adults there. And one gal, well, it was a lady, she raised her hand and she said, um, how old are you? And I said, well, the appeal Democrat made a huge mistake. They said I was 82 and I'm only 81. And she <laughs> said, well, all I can say is you're adorable. <laughs> um, do you like doing public speaking now? Oh, well, I've never taken public speaking course, but I do. I love going out and talking to uh, to whoever wants to listen. Usually I get large, pretty large crowds. The one oh, in it, the one in um, the Reagan Museum, I think I was talking to like 1,300 people, but they were little leaguers and their parents. That is just fantastic. So you were able to hire you if we want to hire you as a speaker for our event. Where can people find you? What is your website? Oh, my website is, and there's some errors on it, but it doesn't matter. The website is tubbyjohnston.com. Who knows? You may become a big superstar yet. Disney contacted me in 2002, and um, they had a screenwriter come out, and we went to Cordy, New York, and they, Dave O'Hare did the screenwriting. And uh, then after about a couple of years of talking about this and trying to get it ready for the movies, um, the CEO of Disney left the company. And when he did, they sort of put my screenplay on a shelf or whatever. But the screenplay since then has been repurchased. The story rights are given back to me. They have the screenplay and it's with a different studio is trying to get funding to make the movie. The movie will be called Who's on First? Oh, that would be an absolutely fantastic movie. Yeah, Keep but I don't up. know how much I can wait. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get them to hurry up so you can enjoy it and enjoy some of the stardom. Well, I've had other opportunities, uh, but I signed the, you know, with other uh, studios, but I've signed a contract with this particular studio, and, uh, and I'm in the contract in 2020. Is there anything you regret that you have not done in your life? Yeah, well, I'm, I can't hear that well now. I hope I can see. The reason why I can't hear Yes, it's not aging, even though I'm old. It's not aging. It has something to do with, um, they thought I had water in the brain, but I've seen a neurosurgeon and he does not think it's that. But they do say that in about another month or so, I will be completely deaf. They, that's what they say. I don't know. I keep praying that won't happen. And I'm going to go to hopefully Stanford to have a cochlear implant like Rush Limbaugh had. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, I sure hope it goes well for you because we, you still have, you have to keep sharing your story. It is absolutely inspiring. My daughter who plays fastball, she's a pitcher and I told her all about you. And I think that you are an inspiration to little girls around the world and women. So thank you so much for sharing your story. Well, I'm honored that you asked me to do that. Thank you. If you have a burning desire to share your story with our audience, apply to be on our podcast. To apply and find a full list of our podcasts, go to www.womentalk.ca.